what we're going to do is we're going to do a reaction between hydrogen and oxygen. Okay? And uh, the, may, the way we make hydrogen is we use, one of the ways we make hydrogen is we use hydrochloric acid. And I want to dilute it. And I'm wearing gloves, and it seems like I picked the small gloves. But small gloves are better than no gloves. And I'm wearing gloves because I'm going to be working with concentrated hydrochloric acid. But I don't want it too concentrated. I want to dilute it. So I've got a little bit of water in here. You can see how the hydrochloric acid makes fumes. So that's about a one-to-one -one ratio. It's still concentrated. Let's put that away. So I've got some zinc. So I'm going to react zinc and hydrochloric acid. We're going to need a match because all chemical reactions need energy. Is more energy going in or more energy going out? So you can immediately see the bubbles. That tells us there's a chemical reaction happening. And the test for hydrogen is simply putting a match there. The hydrogen in there is going to react with oxygen in the air. Anticlimatic. Let's try again. Anyway, that popping sound is, is really the test. I was just hoping it would be a little bit more dramatic than that. Let's try once more. Okay. Well, there we go. It wasn't, it wasn't as loud as I thought it would be. You can see the nice flame over there. That flame that is burning guys back home can see it that's a very clean flame okay because all it's producing is what hydrogen reacting with oxygen what are we making hydrogen oxygen combining two parts hydrogen one part oxygen what are we making water vapor all we're making is water this is a great reaction to use as a fuel because it's clean okay you're not you're not damaging the environment you're not creating a lot of pollution so that was a bit of a bigger one so that popping sound that's the test for hydrogen hydrogen is the only gas that does that let's see if we can do it once more if you think about the reaction between the hydrogen and the oxygen small amount of energy going in and uh and a larger amount of energy coming out. This time I'm going to use nitric acid. So not hydrochloric acid, I'm going to use nitric acid. And I'm going to use some pennies. Pennies are coated with a metallic element that give it this color. What is it? Copper. copper. Okay, I'm going to pour some nitric acid on that copper. What we are going to make is we're going to make nitric oxide, which is colorless. You can't see it. But immediately, the colorless nitric oxide, which is NO, reacts with oxygen, O2, and then we make this brown gas called NO2. And NO2 is, is a pollutant. It's what cars produce uh, out of the exhausts. And the brown haze over a big city, that brown haze is nitrogen dioxide gas. So it's a pollutant. It's a gas we don't really want in the environment. Um, you, thankfully, are not going to breathe it in because it's going to be all in the fume hood. Um, but my favorite part of this reaction comes at the end. I'm going to put in some acid. And can you guys immediately see the brown gas? Okay, let's close it up. So the nitric acid reacted with copper to make nitric oxide, which is NO, and then immediately that comes into contact with oxygen to make nitrogen dioxide, which is a brown gas. Okay, and I've closed the door because we don't want to breathe any of it in. 
How do you guys think I could stop that reaction? Let's say I wanted to stop it now. I've already got it starting. What can I do to stop it? What did I do with my hydrochloric acid at the beginning of that reaction? Diluted, Diluted it. Okay. So if I dilute the acid that's in there, I'm going to slow the reaction down and maybe even stop it. And I want you to think of the, the copper that I put in there. There's, there's a characteristic color that compounds have with copper in them. We know copper is a brownish color, but a compound with copper has got another color. Okay? And color is, a, is an indicator for chemical change. Not only the release of energy, not only bubbles, not only things getting warm, but also a color change. When you see a color change, it's going to be a chemical change. Um, I need a hose pipe, so... Uh, my college professor always used to say, if a reaction doesn't work properly or an experiment doesn't work properly, do it again. I didn't use pure copper, I used pennies. And in pennies, does anyone know what's inside the penny? Zinc, okay? So we were generating, there's a lot of zinc in there with the copper, and the color that I was supposed to get didn't happen. So I'm going to use a pure piece of copper and do that same reaction again. I'm going to put you guys close over here so you can see it. So again, you guys can see the brown gas. Okay, so now I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to put water in there. And the water's going to mix with the copper ions. We've created some copper ions. We don't have any zinc ions this time, so the color is actually going to be the way it's supposed to be. And let's see how that happens. You guys can see. You see the cool blue color at the bottom? Just hold it up like this. So that color change tells us we've got a chemical reaction.